Ladies and gentlemen, fight fans all around the world, from the sunny Caribbean, you are watching What You Need. I'm going to talk about seven boxers through time. And they all have something in common. And I'm going to ask you what they have in common after I'm finished with this video. We're starting off with Charlie Burley. That's this gentleman right here. He's facing Oakland Billy Smith. Watch at his movement. Watch at his style of fighting. Look at the use of his feints. Look how he ties up on the inside. Look at how he turns his opponent. Look at how he rolls punches. Look at how he makes use of his jab. Turns his opponent. Use of feints. Rolling punches. Highly avoided fighter. Avoided by all champions of his time. Welterweight and middleweight champions. Charlie Burley did not get fights with Sugar Ray Robinson or Henry Armstrong, and he existed in their eras. This is James Tony. Watch the guard, watch the stance. He's facing Evander Holyfield at heavyweight. Watch the use of the jab. Notice how he rolls punches. Hooks off the jab. Jabs to the body, to the head, and slips punches. James Tony was a specialist at fighting on the inside. He could roll the jab, slip the jab. Parry catch. Notice the lead shoulder always in position, always in the side on defense like Charlie Burley, never giving the opponent a full target. In his 90 plus fights, like Charlie Burley, he had never been stopped. Having a close match against Mike McCollum. While he wasn't a highly avoided fighter, he was a fighter that Roy Jones Jr. himself described as being his toughest opponent. Very difficult style to deal with. He also was a world champion in multiple divisions between middleweight, light heavyweight, and some minor titles like cruiserweight and heavyweight. Mike McCollum. Here he is facing Sumbu Kalimbe. Mike McCollum is this gentleman in black. Here he's facing a boxer who can move. Kalimbe very skilled himself. Again, the use of the jab. Though a little bit more square, the use of the shoulder, but instead he uses the high guard to block or guard against punches. Watch 
of them jab and catch the punches. Now watch him slip the jab right here. While McCollum wasn't the fastest boxer, he definitely had pretty good timing. McCollum, like Charlie Burley, was a highly avoided fighter. He never faced... It's almost a hitman Hearns, even though he was his mandatory, as well as Roberto Duran. And he never faced Sugar Ray Leonard or Marvin Hagler. But he fought some good fighters, like Sungu Kalimbe, who beat him once, and then he ended up beating Kalimbe. He also faced James Tony and Roy Jones Jr., Donald Curry and Julian Jackson. Like Burley and Tony, he never had been knocked out in his career. Perno Whitaker, Southpaw. Watch at his stance, watch at his movement. Whitaker could fight on the inside but he can also fight on the outside. One thing that's different between Whitaker and Mike McCollum is that Whitaker had a sense of timing where he attacked you when you least expected. He didn't just counter punch, but he actually attacked you and fainted you to throw you off balance. He also fought very well off the back foot, and he used the pivot very well. If he punched, he pivoted. Watch it here. Feint, feint, punch, and pivot. See it? A very difficult fighter to face. Notice the use of the lead shoulder on the inside. Also, notice the guard to protect the chin. Also, his feet are at a different angle to his torso, making him very difficult to hit, and he keeps on using pivots, and he has the side on defense, making him a very small target. A stellar career, the man could hardly be touched, like James Tony, like Charlie Brown, and like Mike McCollum. Apprentice Whitaker got knocked out very late in his career. Now we're going to look at Floyd Mayweather against Oscar De La Hoya, who supposedly beat Colonel Whitaker. Mayweather, like Whitaker, he can fight off the back foot, and using feints, he shoots shots and either pivots, pulls back, moves to the slide, but like all the fighters we just mentioned, he had the skills to slip a jab. Like Whitaker, he had a great sense of timing, and he knows how to attack his opponent and keep them off balance. Notice all of them have a certain type of stance. Early. Tony, Mayweather, Whitaker, McCollum has a more square stance and sometimes uses the high guard, but even McCollum. Like Whitaker, Mayweather had this upper body movement that is different to his lower body movement. So he could actually pivot on you and turn you. Attacking off the front or back foot.
Mayweather is a very difficult opponent. And like Burley, he never got knocked out in his career. Now we will look at Terence Crawford. This was his most recent fight against Derry Jean. While Crawford doesn't use as much pivots, watch at his body position again. His stance a little more square than Burley, Whitaker, Tony. But notice again the side on stance. Sometimes using a step jab. Sometimes rolling or slipping punches. Sometimes using the high guard. Reminding me more of Mike McCollum and his style of boxing than Whitaker, Mayweather, or Burley. It doesn't remind me of James Tony's style. But he's still using elements that Mayweather, Whitaker, Burley use. Now the added ingredient in Terence Crawford's style is the fact that he can change stats. Now there's one more fighter I want to talk about but I don't have video footage of him. Guillermo Rigondeaux. Like all the fighters that we've just spoken about, his style is also very difficult. Guillermo Rigondeaux is a highly avoided fighter. In fact, he's just recently been stripped from the WBO title. That's because he could get no fights between 2014, the end of it, and to the present time. And while he has other woes besides just not getting high caliber opponents, that is one of his major problems. He's probably the most avoided boxer in boxing. All of these fighters exhibit this particular style of boxing. When you start to analyze this particular style, because styles make fights, there is a lot of different things that must be put together to become a master of this particular style. So my question to you is, what do all of these boxers, in terms of their style, how they box, have in common? You can leave your comments in the comment section below. I'll be more than happy to entertain discussions on that and you guys have